gun bluing to develop latent prints on cartridge cases. Now, getting fingerprints off of cartridge cases uh, is not always easy. You're normally not going to get much DNA off of them because it's a cartridge case. It means it's been fired. The intense heat uh, that happens during the firing process will pretty much do away with DNA. I mean, you can still try, but it, it's, it's a challenge. And then also, it, you're not going to find uh, moisture and oils uh, as readily. But we have found we can take these recovered cartridge cases and they can be dipped into diluted or undiluted gun bluing to cause a chemical reaction between the bluing and the fingerprint residue on the cartridge case. It seems to work best on brass. It doesn't work as well on nickel plated or aluminum cartridges. This chemical reaction is quick. That's why often we dilute it. So it slows the process down a little bit. So you have, and you have to stop the process by putting in a water bath before you, it goes too far. Now you can super glue cartridge cases. If you have an unfired case, uh, super gluing works really well. And also you can usually find DNA. If these are cartridge cases that have been loaded into a gun, unfired ones, it's when you fire it and you have that extreme heat that it's becomes more of a problem. Uh, so you can try super gluing, but let's look at the process of using uh, gun bluing. First of all, we need to do some documentation. Uh, are these casings all the same caliber? Uh, are they the same brand? And you see the stamp on the base cartridge case. Are they the same color? And when you describe the color in your notes, in your report, it's either white metal or yellow metal. Uh, you don't actually say brass, you say yellow metal, because you don't really know if it's made out of brass or it's just a yellow metal. What color is the primer? Because the primer often is a different color than the case. And what's the head stamp information? So what's the head stamp like here? You can see it's a spear uh, Luger, nine millimeter Luger. So that's the size. And this would be a yellow case with a white primer. So we have white metal casings, yellow metal casings. We have white metal primer and yellow metal primers. And you can have a, as we saw in the last picture, a yellow metal casing with a white metal primer. Well, we need to write that down to be thorough in our notes and report. Now let's get to the process of using gun bluing to bring out these latents. If we're using gun bluing, we never dip the base, that's the part with the primer, into the bluing. Because you don't want that to cause any problems with the primer. And you always have a fresh water supply container to dip your uh, cartridge in at, at the right time. You have to watch the reaction very closely. It only takes a few seconds. You can always take it out and look and then put it back in and then look. That's the way you do it. And then you photograph the results. As far as the gun bluing goes, and I'll show you what the gun bluing is in case you're not quite sure what that means. Uh, it can be used either full strength or diluted. I prefer to dilute it 50-50. So you use half gun bluing and half distilled water. That slows down the reaction time and it's easier to control. You can Always try different um, variations on the dilution and see what works best for you. Now, as far as the materials, this is an example of the liquid gun blue. And this is, you can buy these at sporting goods stores and uh, gun stores. And it's made for touching up the steel of a revolver or a firearm of some sort. That, ha that has bluing from the factory that's worn off, you can touch it up. And then also you need to have some forceps or uh, this is a terminal plier. You wanna make sure you use something that will not react with the bluing, so it can't be metal. So use either plastic tools or dip the metal ones in the liquid plastic that you can get at hardware stores. So you get this liquid plastic, to you know, coat the 
grips on a, a pair of pliers or your screwdriver. That's what they're typically for. And you would actually do it on the other end so that when you're holding the cartridge and dipping it into the bluing, there's no metal uh, from, the, from the forceps or the terminal plier. So you grasp the casing by the base, not the neck. You don't want to damage the primer and you don't want to get any of that acid on the primer because it's there's some acid involved here. You dip quickly, remove, watch it. You can re-dip as necessary. So here we go. We dip this shell casing for one to two seconds and examine it and then re-dip it as necessary. So you see we're holding on to it with these terminal pliers that have been coated with the plastic so that they're not going to contribute to any reaction. Watch the reaction closely. It only takes a few seconds. If you do wait too long, you're going to end up with a black cartridge. You won't see any fingerprint detail at all. Immediately dip the casing in fresh water to stop the reaction. If the reaction is not acceptable, you can repeat the process. So typically what I do is 50-50, I dip it in for a few seconds, bring it out, and put it in the water, and then look. Or you can dip it in the solution, look at it as you're going to the water, and if it doesn't look like you get enough, go ahead and redo it. But it's okay to put it in the water first and then look. The, the one thing you don't want to do is have it go too long. And I'll show you why in just a moment. Uh, when you have it the way you want it, you rinse it for five seconds to stop the chemical reaction. You allow the cartridge case to air dry. Don't wipe it. Don't use towels. Just let it air dry. Otherwise, you'll damage the print. And then once you're all done, you photograph it, and you can cover it with clear tape to protect it. What happens if you overdevelop? Well, this is what you get. Not a whole lot of detail. What happens if you do it just right? And you get detail that may look like this. Now that's assuming the print's there. So sometimes you end up with a black cartridge because I kept looking, I kept looking and nothing happened. Well, now it's too dark, there was nothing there. And then one last thing on this, gun blue is an acid and it has a negative impact on the recovery of DNA evidence. So if you think you're gonna get DNA, you need to do that instead. Uh, maybe dust, uh, you could super glue and dust and then go for DNA. Uh, super glue doesn't damage DNA, but if you do the gun gluing first, you're not gonna be able to do DNA. But as I said, DNA is usually destroyed when the weapon's fired. So you may not be trying that at all.